Minute answer are short conceptual questions. If you are looking for one of these questions in particular, watch the bottom left hand side of the screen for that number to come up. We're starting at the top. If an organization deliber oh, deliberately tolerates the possibility of a loss, is this possibility a strategic or an external risk? The answer is strategic. The key there in answering that was deliberately tolerates. An external risk would be something that just happens, it's in the environment, but firms choose strategic risks. Okay, what's next? Consider three organizations, one operating during an emergency, one operating during a crisis, and one operating during a disaster. By definition of these three terms, which organization has the best potential to stop any loss before it happens? That is the one with a crisis. The organization that is operating during a crisis is the one that is best positioned to stop a loss before it happens because, and you say, huh, why? Because of the definition of a crisis. A crisis is the period before a significant change of great consequence. So uh, an emergency is happening and a disaster has happened. Uh, it's only a crisis that you have any runway that you might stop something actually before it happens. Okay, next. If a company considers 10 different future states of nature to be equally likely, and each of the 10 has a different value, how can the company calculate the expected value? The easiest way to do that is average the values. Why? Because an expected value, you take the value of a future state of nature and you multiply it times the probability, and then you add it to the value of another future state of nature multiplied by its probability. What this particular question is saying is, is that there's 10 future states of nature, considering them equally likely means they each have the same probability, and actually that probability would have to be 1 tenth or 0.1. Ah, so you'd say 0.1 times the value plus 0.1 times the value plus 0.1 times the value. That is actually mathematically the equivalent of just taking those values and averaging them. Okay. Is disruptive innovation more likely to create an emergency or a crisis? Ah, this is related to what we were talking about before. It is more likely to create a crisis. Disruptive innovation is technological change that transforms the market. Oh, wait a minute. It says most likely between those two. An emergency is something you didn't expect. An emergency is unexpected, completely unexpected. It emerges. So if you have to pick between these two, now wait a minute, disruptive innovation, it's true that something has happened, right? And the marketplace is changing. But if you're in that marketplace, don't tell me that you did, Kaiden didn't a little bit expect that there would be some type of innovation. Maybe you didn't know exactly what direction it was going to go. So you're in crisis because now there's a change, but emergency just doesn't make any sense. Okay, a manager assumes an unlikely request, okay, an unlikely request in an order must be the result of some unusual customer, okay. Is this an example of, and we have two choices, outcome bias or normalization? That is definitely an example of normalization. Because what's the scenario? There's an order and there's an extremely unlikely number on it. Oh, like for instance, customers generally order several hundred dollars worth of this stuff. We're looking at this one order that's come across, or it's showing on the screen, and they've ordered $50 million worth of that stuff. The manager's thinking, whoo, must be a big customer. Okay, now wait a minute. Normalization is a tendency to accept anomalies, and that's exactly what we're just doing. I mean, we are not saying 50 million, that can't be right. I think that there must be like a data input error or something. No, 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 we're instead creating a story that makes the 50 million correct. It just must be a really huge customer that's known as normalization to make something normal. Okay, next question. 
Someone complains that about a supplier who makes mistakes and a manager shrugs and says, oh, at least they're consistent. Did the manager just comment on the reliability or the robustness of the supplier's performance? Uh, now, these two terms sound very similar. There's an important distinction between them. The manager in saying, well, at least they're consistent, has just commented on their robustness. Okay, reliability is essentially a performance measure. Reliability is, in essence, the proportion of time that something meets its requirements. Okay, here's a supplier that is making mistakes and not necessarily meeting requirements, so their reliability is not all that great. Robustness is the consistency of a system, a supplier, an entity's reliability. Robust, to say something is very robust is to say that it has a consistent level of reliability. The ironic thing is, like the supplier, that reliability might not necessarily itself be very handsome, <laughs> but you know, at least they're consistent. It is robust. All right, next question. Does increasing system complexity without increasing redundancy then increase or decrease system reliability? Increasing complexity, if not without adding redundancy, is definitely going to decrease system reliability. Okay, because the more complexity you add, the more links and relationships and elements that you have added to the picture that could any one of them potentially fail, and that's going to interfere with reliability. Uh, all right, now, what's the next question? Does increasing redundancy increase or decrease reliability? Ooh, increasing redundancy increases reliability. The more redundant elements you have, right, the more backup you have, the more reliable your system should be, generally speaking. Next question. Does increasing redundancy, okay, increasing redundancy again, increase or decrease overall utilization of the system? Uh, this is the catch. It decreases it. It's true that increasing redundancy, you know, having more backups increases reliability, but increasing redundancy also decreases utilization, which is a performance measure. So gen while you're safer, generally speaking, your performance measure looks poor, so that's the catch. All right, next question. What, which requires improvisation? Business impact analysis or bricolage? The answer is bricolage. Business impact analysis is definitely important, but bricolage means creating a solution on the spot from whatever you happen to have at the moment. That requires improvisation. Okay. Is the news vendor problem an example of overbooking or yield management? It is an example of yield management the class of problems known as yield management. Well, how are you supposed to know it was that over overbooking? Ah, because overbooking, overbooking is also an example of yield management. Huh, okay, who knew? If a group of people, group, notice that, stop a discussion of an important decision for fear of an argument between two members, the outcome of that decision is in danger of what? It is in definite danger from groupthink. Groupthink refers to when an important decision, and that's what I was asking about, is not explored completely, uh, of which they said they stopped the discussion, in order to avoid conflict within the group. And they said they stopped the discussion of the important decision because they were afraid of an argument breaking out between two people. That is groupthink in action.